on harder SAT questions, you might see questions dealing with the transformations of functions using function notation. And there's an easy way to do these kinds of questions. So let's imagine for a second, I have some f of x that looks like this. Not quite like that, something more like that. And I want to know what does f of x plus 1 look like? Well, this is actually just moving this picture over one unit to the left. So that would look maybe something like that. Whereas if I have f of x minus 1, this would be moving it over one unit to the right. So that would look something like that. So if you have the plus 1 in the parentheses, in the x part, then you're moving it to the left. If it's plus 1 and if it's minus 1 in the parentheses, you're moving it to the right that many units. How about if it's outside of the parentheses? So what if I have f of x minus, or we'll do plus 1? Well, this is actually moving the function up one unit. So that would be something like that. Finally, you might expect where this is going. f of x minus 1, what would this do? Well, this would move it down one unit. So something like that. So the whole point is when the, the number is outside of the f of x, it's going to either move it up if it's positive or down if it's negative. So let's imagine I have some function. And it looks something like, let's say this. We'll call it g of x. And the SAT question wants to know, what does g of x plus 2 minus 1 look like? Or it might say, you know, here's a different function. What is the equation of this new guy if this is g of x? Either way, what would this look like if I applied these changes to it? Well, first, we're going to move this guy two units to the left. So we're going to be like, let's see, this top point should be, we'll say like over here. And then we're moving it one down, so we're going to bring the entire thing down one unit. So maybe this top point would be here, and this lower point is going to be maybe like right here, a little bit lower. So you can see the picture we're going to be looking for is going to look something like that. It's shifted two to the left and one down, right? and that is the transformation. So just memorize these rules, and you can get these questions done pretty quickly. And again, they're usually hards, so if you're not looking for hards, don't worry about it too much. One little note about negatives. If I have some f of x, and then I make it negative f of x, what does that do? Well, let's imagine my f of x looks something like this. That's actually too annoying and weird. Let's do something like this. What would happen in this case if this were f of x? Negative f of x would just flip it upside down. So now it's going to go down, up, down, like that. Right? So when you have a negative out front, it just flips it. So for example, if you had x squared, that looks like this. Whereas if you have negative x squared, if you remember anything about your parabolas, that makes it the frowny face. Just flips it over the axis. Well, that's just a little minor note about that. Finally, absolute value. So imagine we had some function x plus 2. What would that look like normally? Well, we're going to talk about lines in a, in a future video, but it's got a y-intercept of 2. And it's got a slope of 1, so it's got to look something, something like that. What would then, let's do a different color, what would this look like? f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2. Well, what does absolute value do again? It turns any negative number in there, when it becomes a negative number, into a positive. So when x is 0, when x is 1, when x is 2, it's the same, right? So x is 0, it's still equal to uh, y is 2, as we can see here. When x is 3, it's still equal to x is 5. That's somewhere up here. But what happens when we get, you know, x is negative 2, this thing equals 0, absolute value is 0. But how about if we plug in negative 3? Well, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, but then we absolute valueize it, and it becomes positive 1. So instead of dropping beneath the axis, as it does here, it's basically going to bounce off of the axis and flip up to the positive region, right? Because anything negative, when we absolute valueize it, will become positive. So if you ever see a question where they absolute value outside of a um, normal function, wherever that function went negative, it's going to spring up and become positive. So here you can imagine it's almost reflecting off the surface in some way. And that's pretty much all you need to know for transformations. Again, these are generally harder questions. Uh, so if you're not worrying about the hards too much, don't worry about it. But if you do know this, it makes them pretty easy.